Hello guys! This vlog is coming from Dar es Salaam with the amazing view of the city and the harbour behind me. Um, we just came here this morning, me and my husband. Um, the main reason for the travel is that tomorrow evening I'm going to fly to Germany and I always have to fly to Dar or to Kilimanjaro Airport to even catch a flight that goes to Germany. I also have to do a corona test and I didn't know that you could do it in Mwanza and I'm not sure when I like informed myself it was even possible to do it in Mwanza so I just decided to come here to Dar, do the corona test and then fly out from here directly. So yeah, we came here this morning with the early morning flight which is why I maybe look quite tired because I only had like four hours of sleep. We had a nice evening with my sisters-in-law yesterday and yeah, it got quite late <laughs> and then we had to get up early to catch the flight. Um, yeah, but other than that, it was a very nice day. When we arrived in Dar es Salaam, the first thing I did was taking a Uber to go to the hospital and do my corona test, which was a little bit complicated because, yeah, apparently I need the test results when I enter the the airport tomorrow but I didn't know that so I thought there would be enough time to, for me to get my results because I don't need it for the first part of my flight I only need it when I take the direct flight to Germany which is only the morning after so yeah that was a little bit complicated and now I'm hoping that my test results will be there on time um, yeah so but then I went for lunch with my husband together we were at um, Taikani, which is a very nice restaurant located um, on the seaside. I'm sure I took a nice video of that. I forgot to take a video of our food, but we had nice sushi um, for me without fish <laughs> because I'm not a big fan of fish or any, especially raw fish. I don't know, just don't really like it. But I had like uh, avocado cucumber sushi, it was really nice. And they also have uh, Thai food, so Japanese and Thai food and it was very delicious. It was a Slipway shopping center. Um, so there's different restaurants and there's small shops where you can buy mostly souvenirs and a few clothes. And the way it is made is very nice. And the beach there is very pretty, the water looks very clear. Unfortunately, we have quite cloudy weather here, but I'm also happy because what I heard about Dar is that it's humid and hot, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, we even had a few raindrops during the day, um, so for me it was the perfect weather actually. It's a little bit windy, sometimes a little bit chilly, but I could still most of the time just wear my top or, yeah, like you see now I have to check it over because somebody turned on their AC in here and it's cooling it down too much. For my taste yeah then after that um, my husband went to do some work I uh, had the afternoon for myself and I wanted to explore the city because I have only been to Dar at the airport and I haven't been in the city and I haven't seen anything from it um, so I thought I should take the chance of this afternoon I first took a uh, uh, Boda Boda so usually I would um, always go here with Uber because it's the cheapest way and it's the safest way to to get from A to B. Um, yeah, so even you can get your Boda Bodas, your Bajajis or taxis through Uber and you pay a better price. Um, and also, yeah, it's more secure, uh, more safe than to just go in any car. Uh, I went to Seacliff Village because it was said on TripAdvisor, so I just looked at TripAdvisor what to do in the area where I was. Um, but I didn't really like it there, it was quite boring, there was not a lot going on. There was like a little supermarket that was quite empty. The only thing they had was a wide variety of cheese, which I appreciate. But I didn't buy anything because I think we will just go out to eat here while we're here. Um, yeah, and other than that, it was like a restaurant, but since I just had lunch, I didn't feel like going there. So I left after like five minutes <laughs> and took a taxi to go to um, Coco Beach. 
which I think can be very nice, especially when the weather is nice. Probably it's like a meeting spot and people are there. Um, but today it was quite deserted and there was a lot of garbage laying on the sand, which I think is very, very sad. Um, I mean, there should be like a project about picking up your trash or something if it's like a tourist attraction or a place where people often go to. I don't know. Um, I enjoyed walking at the beach. I got disturbed by a few people who like, oh, come to my shop, have some drink or food or buy this or that. But I just told them like, I just want to walk here. Um, but that was like the only experience I made here today where people tried to be a little bit pushy, um, which I usually get a lot here in Tanzania, especially when I'm in a busy place or when I'm walking on the street. But yeah, this place was the only place where I experienced it so far in Dar. Other than that, people quite left me alone and were, yeah, just very friendly. They, I didn't get a lot of the Mzungu calling. So I like the people here. They're very relaxed and kind. Um, then I wanted to go to the art garage. Um, but somehow I was on the... Um, on the Bajaji and we missed it and I didn't really see a sign or anything so maybe I was in the wrong place because that's what happened afterwards also that I just got off somewhere because I thought there was like the village museum where I went later but it wasn't there and I had to walk like 30 minutes and I felt too lazy to take another ba uh, Bajaji so yeah I got off I, I didn't get off there and I was just in the Bajaji and I was like you know really I don't want to see art I was very tired at this moment and so I decided to go to Palm Village Shopping Mall um, and have a coffee and treat myself with a chocolate croissant, uh, walk around the mall a little bit. I wanted to buy maybe a book or some clothes, but in the end I didn't buy anything. It was just like window shopping. Um, it was a nice place, especially because I was feeling a little bit tired at that point to just relax a little bit. And uh, yeah have something to eat and a coffee and I felt much better afterwards and then I went to the village museum like I just said I got lost on the way I had to walk quite for some time and again I didn't make the experience that people were pushy or annoying I mean they asked me a lot if I want to have a lift or like a ride because it's not very common for people to just walk especially white people I don't think they see a lot of white people just walking in town <laughs> and not wanting a, a ride to go somewhere um, yeah but it was also nice uh, then I went to the I wanted to go to the village museum but at first I discovered the Dar es Salaam war cemetery which is um, not too big but it's quite interesting because it tells a little bit about the story of the First World War here in Tanzania and I think around 60,000 people died in the war here and there was just like yeah the cemetery which is more like a memorial place you can walk around there there's no entrance fee or anything um, and I thought it was quite interesting to learn something about that because I don't really know so much about this history here. Um, I know a lot about it from German side, German perspective in Europe, but not really from here. So if you're in Dar es Salaam, I can definitely yeah, advise you to go there and just to read a little bit about it. I don't think you will spend a lot of time there, but you can walk around and see it. It was very interesting. And then just on the other side of the road, there is the village museum. And I was really impressed by that. I haven't seen a lot of museums here in Tanzania, which I like. Um, especially, there have been like two museums that I like. The one was on Zanzibar in Stone Town. There is the um, former slave market, which is so interesting. To, it's very sad, but it's very interesting. The second one is the one in near Mwanza, Bujara. I will maybe make a video about that and tell you a little bit about, about that. And... Um, it, there's a, in Bujara there's a Sukuma museum. The village museum here in Dar es Salaam talks a lot or shows a lot of the different cultures here in Tanzania. There's around 120 different tribes and uh, each tribe has like different traditions, different cultures, different habits um, and the village museum focuses mainly 
on the houses that these people have. First, you can read a little bit about the different cultures and uh, yeah, get to know a little bit of basic knowledge. And then you walk around and you see like a lot of different houses from very different tribes. Um, and that's quite interesting. I just really enjoyed walking there. There were some women practicing for dancing. They invited me to join dance with them. And yeah, I read a lot of information. Most of it I already forgot. Unfortunately, I couldn't take any pictures or videos there because I would have had to pay for it and I didn't know what to expect there. But I can really, really, really tell you you should go there when you're in Dar es Salaam. It's so interesting, especially if you want to learn a little bit more about Tanzania maybe, about the cultures, maybe even if you're new here, you have to pay entrance fee, but it's not that much. I think for adults that are foreigners it's 12,000 and I paid 6,000 because I'm a resident and then it can be even cheaper than that when you're a student I think. And then you can get a guide, I think they will probably tell you a lot more than what is written on there. Um, but because I was alone I didn't really feel it's appropriate and it would be 30,000 shillings and I was like uh, that's too much, I would just read and have a look and maybe I will come back another time and then I will do that. I also didn't pay for watching the dance because I was dancing with the women because they invited me but you can also just pay I think it would have been for me 5,000 shillings so like very little to see it, traditional dances. I don't quite know which tribes they resemble or what it would be about but uh, I always liked that. Um, in Bujara there's also the possibility to see some traditional Sukuma dancing and it's just so cool to see that. Yeah so um, that was a very big highlight for me um, and actually also the last thing I did today. Then I took another Uber taxi to come here to our Airbnb and you can already see the nice nice view. Just want to show you maybe a little bit more. So yeah, this is the bed. It's not too big. Here's like a table. There's a little bit of mess. Because <laughs> I just unpacked all my things. And then yeah, you have the view here. With the harbor. And the city. And then here is the bathroom. Also just what you need quite basic but I really like the view and the price is very very reasonable um, and there's a common room downstairs in the kitchen which yeah um so I'm going to rest a little bit maybe take a shower brush my teeth and wait for my husband to come back and we're gonna meet with some friends for dinner I don't know yet where we're going maybe I'm also gonna take like a short clip so you can see where we are or I will tell you about it tomorrow because I think we will not be coming back that early and <laughs> I think we're going to be both so tired and exhausted and that we're just going to go to sleep. Yeah, so tomorrow I have another day um, in Dar es Salaam. In the evening I fly out. I will definitely take some more pictures, small videos and maybe even give you some more advice tomorrow about the things I did and what I can tell you you should do when you come to Dar es Salaam. And yeah. See you then! <laughs> Welcome back! Um, I'm making the second part of my little vlog about Dar es Salaam already in Germany. It was so busy, I didn't have time to film anything on the last day in Dar es Salaam. I will tell you more about that later. Um, unfortunately, I didn't film anything in the evening because, um, well, I'm always very uncomfortable when there's other people around and I'm just there making like little videos because I also like to enjoy my time with friends and not be like on the phone and filming everything. I don't like always taking pictures of my food and stuff. I just also like to enjoy sometimes and not document everything I do. So I had a nice evening. And yeah, then on the next day, I went to this really, really nice um, breakfast location. It's a cafe. Um, it's called Central Park Cafe. And um, I was there on my own. 
because my husband went to work also on that day but I had a really nice time the people there were so friendly like I came in I needed some change for paying my taxi and they immediately helped me and then they were so so kind all the time I was there really friendly the location is so beautiful and the food is also delicious so if you ever are in Dar es Salaam I should you should definitely go there. Um, I was there for breakfast, I don't know about their lunch or dinner, I don't know if they're open, but yeah, for breakfast, definitely a go-to place. Then after that, I, con I walked to the National Museum because it wasn't that far. Um, and I wanted also to get some exercise in the day, so I decided to try walk a lot, but on the first day it was just too far always. Um, so I walked to the National Museum. It was very interesting, um, a lot about uh, evolution theory, about um, millions of years ago, um, how human came about, and uh, yeah, about the special footprints in Odulai. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, and how, yeah, kind of the Great Rift Valley is the place where humans come from and it's also in Tanzania the Great Rift Valley even though yeah probably they are not really the first people there I don't know so much about it but it was so interesting to read about it I already forgot everything again but yeah I went to this museum and I was really impressed on how big it was and um, how much information they had the only thing I didn't like so much was that you had to read a lot so there were some exhibition parts but you had to read a lot 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 and I was very interested in it so I kind of read almost all of it um, but I think if you're not that into reading maybe you become a little bit bored um, but you can look at the artifacts they have so the part about the evolution um, there's like different parts I don't know if they maybe also change the exhibition sometimes but there were some um, pictures, there was a part about the slave history, there was um, yeah, a lot of other exhibitions and you could also go outside. Um, there was a memorial and there was a lot of things going on there. I don't even remember now because it's like more than a week ago that I was there because I was just also so busy here in Germany. But yeah, I can definitely advise you to go there if you're interested in um, history and in like, yeah, going to a museum and reading about new things. Really go there, um, be prepared to read a lot. <laughs> then I wanted to visit two churches. The one was the Azania Front Lutheran Church and the second one, the St. Joseph's Cathedral. But at the same time, I was also trying to meet with a friend. So I kind of walked um, past the Azania Front Lutheran Church and <laughs> I don't know where it was. I just walked past it and Google Maps showed me like, oh, you passed it. And I was like, where is it? So um, after that, from our hotel room, I could see it from the window. So I saw that I was just on the road next to it and it was just like behind some buildings and I just didn't see it. But at that moment I also didn't care so much because I wanted to meet up with my friend. So I cannot tell you really a lot about that church. Then I passed the St. Joseph's Cathedral and I wanted to enter it but there seemed to be a service and there were so many people. I just took like a quick shot of it and then continued to walk because it's like next to our Airbnb. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I didn't go inside, so I cannot really tell you anything, but it looks nice, so maybe if you have time, you can go inside. And then I wanted to just hang out with my friends. We went to uh, one mall. Um, I have to research again what it was called. Uh, it's like the nicest mall, they told me, because uh, my friends were from Dar es Salaam, and they told me this is the best mall we have. There's some shops, there's some grocery stores, there is a nice place to have ice cream, that's what we had, we had some ice cream. And then um, my husband came back and he came also to the mall and we had lunch there at Samaki Samaki. Um, we also went there in the evening to um, party. It's a nice place in town and then they have this one near the mall also where we had lunch. It was also very delicious, so they have good food, they have this like um, so many small details in these places that make it really unique. 
I don't know what it is, but I really like it. Um, so you should also check that one out. And before that, in the evening, I forgot to tell you, we went to a barbecue place. It's called Barbecue Village. It's like huge on the outside. There's like a little playground for kids. And um, there were so many waiters when we came and we were like, wow. This place is so empty and so big and there's so many waiters. What are they waiting for? And then the longer we stayed, the more it filled up and it was like light in the evening, but so many people came out to have dinner with big groups and it was a very nice vibe and the food was also really good. Um, yeah, but I am sure in Dar es Salaam, most of the food places are nice and good and yeah, but I just wanted to share this one with you. Yeah, so after our lunch at Samaki Samaki, we went um, back to our Airbnb because it was time for me to pack everything and to go to the airport because I was flying out to Germany in the evening. That was another big, big, big hustle because I did my Corona test, as you remembered, as soon as I arrived in Dar es Salaam and I haven't gotten my results on that day, so... I went to the airport without the corona test results. That means I'm not allowed officially to enter even Germany. And they also didn't let me enter the aircraft. And I'm really very disappointed in the system of the corona tests because I was even like calling all the time with the hospital, Hussein Polyclinic. And the manager told me like, oh, you're gonna get your result. Even during the day I was calling with him and then also when I went to the airport I got more stressed about it. He's like, oh, you're gonna get your results in time, blah, 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 don't worry. I didn't. And I mean, maybe it's not the fault of the clinic, um, but the fault of the national laboratory who was supposed to process my test and give me the results. So um, until my flight departed, it was like 35 or even more hours since I took my test and online they say it's 24 hours and I mean like even the test is not valid after 72 after 72 hours yeah I think so so I don't understand why they're taking so long like half of the time when the test is valid it's already passed until you get it and the issue is I never got it I went to the airport and they didn't let me enter I was like, yeah, but I'm gonna get the results before I enter Germany, so please just let me get into my plane. They were like, no, no way. I had to do a rapid test there. Um, and there were also a lot of other people who had that issue. I don't know if they had the same problem with their PCR test or what was going on there, but there were so many people and in the end I almost missed my flight because of this stupid <laughs> PCR test. Um, yeah, and until today I didn't get my results, so this is really making me a little bit angry and I don't know really where I can go to complain. I mean, I paid a hundred dollars, uh, 230,000 shillings for the laboratory and another 60,000 shillings to the hospital who took my test. And I never got a result. And then at the airport, I had to take this other test, which was another $25 um, for the rapid test. And luckily, Germany accepted that test result um, instead of the PCR test result, which I didn't really know that it was possible. But I'm so happy this, because otherwise I would have had to pay a big fine or something here in Germany. I don't know. And it's ah, oh, it was really, like, stressful. But therefore the goodbyes from my husband wasn't too bad and now I'm here in Germany celebrating my dad's birthday, going on trips with my friends, um, just enjoying to be around family and relatives um, for a whole month actually. And I thought maybe I make a vlog about this as well, but I'm just enjoying the time so much I don't even think about filming anything. So probably no vlog about Germany but there will be much more about Tanzania so stay tuned um, yeah subscribe my channel if you want to um, get notified about my videos you should also turn on the notification bell you can also follow me on Instagram where I um, post pictures and it's kind of like a blog because I always write a lot to the pictures um, I make stories about things that are happening at the moment so it's a little bit more updated than this 
vlog generally on YouTube because sometimes I'm really late with my videos. Um, yeah, so see you next time.